Hi, Karen here. We are just about to leave for the airport in about half an hour and I wanted to give you my top uh, favorite things I loved about Banff and Lake Louise and maybe a few things I didn't like quite so much. Good news and bad news. Let's get on to the positive ones first. The most obvious thing has to be the scenery. It is pretty spectacular. walk around in Banff, all you see are the Rockies all around you. It's like a movie backdrop everywhere you go. Another thing that I really loved about being here is that it's very ethnically diverse. You get to meet people from America, America. other parts of Canada, build them a third on my favorite shirt, a few from Europe, Austria, Austria, good day mate, a few from the UK, and of course, the Aussies. He's got a knife. That's a knife. That's a knife. They have invaded Banff and Lake Louise. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. Not only is it friendly, people do try to really bend over backwards to accommodate you. We went to Panorama for the day, another ski hill, and the bus scheduling was a little bit off, and they were about 50 minutes later than they had originally planned. And they sent us an email to offer us free snowshoeing or hiking as compensation for that. I went to get my ski rental. The guys there were really, really nice. I ended up getting my ski poles for free for the week. They're always trying to come up with something to make you feel welcome. And of course, the bottomless cup of coffee everywhere you go always makes me feel extremely welcome. The skiing is fabulous. Our family usually go to France or Italy for the ski breaks. So we were a little bit apprehensive. Is it gonna live up? Yes, it did. It was fantastic. We actually never finished Lake Louise. We, we only went actually to Lake Louise and Panorama. We never went to Sunshine. Canada? Wow. <laughs> Must have been cold. And we didn't finish Lake Louise. You could easily come here for a week or two weeks. You could easily come back here several years in a row. There's lots and lots and lots available for you. The greens, I've never enjoyed greens so much. I mean, they, they do require a little bit of skill and the blues were also really, really good. What that means is that if you were a true beginner, I think Lake Louise would be too difficult for you. I think that you can go to, I think it's called Norkey. That is definitely for the beginners. And once you're over that initial hurdle, then Lake Louise can absolutely uh, be the place for you. Panorama, I can say, would have some beginner hills, but even then, the greens and the blues are just that little bit more difficult than you would get the greens and blues when you're over in Europe. There are lots and lots of non-skiing activities that you can do as well. We went to a hockey game one night in Canmore. And you don't want a dog to uh, kill chickens to hang a chicken around its neck. It was a 24 minute bus ride away. There are lots of walking things that you can do. You can go up Tunnel Mountain for free. Every Friday night up at the Banff Arts Centre, there's a free concert that the students put on and it's a different concert every week. We went to a concert um, and we bought tickets for. So that's something that we really, really enjoyed as well. Another non-skiing activity is skating and it costs $8 to rent skates. And I can tell you, they're really good, supportive hockey skates. They're not the flimsy pick skates, like figure skates that are really, I think, impossible to skate on, actually. And if skating outside without rink boards around, because there's nothing to hang on to, there is actually a small arena that's also close by. I think it's called the Recreation Center. We walked up to the Banff Springs Hotel, which is of course a very famous hotel. In the hotel they have a lovely coffee shop if you want to have a coffee. We enjoyed the art gallery that was there. They also had an artist in residence that was carving soapstones. And it was terrific talking to him and hearing what he had to say. He's been a sculptor in Canada here for over 20 years. You also have to try the things you can only try in Canada. There are certain things that we are kind of famous for besides maple syrup and moose. When it comes to things like food, there are certain chains that you can only find in Canada. David's Tea. The staff are incredible. Please go to David's Tea when you're in Banff. Another thing that you can get in Banff that is very Canadian are beaver tails. I'm not even going to tell you what it is, but I can tell you it's not a real beaver. I also found some really tasty vegan snacks that we can't get in the UK. I like this brand, it's called Prana. These are almonds in maple syrup. Mm. 
Whoa, you're not gonna use that crap, are you? This is almond and sea salt chocolate bark. Yum, yum, yum. Of course, the number one thing has to be Tinnies. You have to get Tim Hortons over and over and over and over and over. The most famous type of coffee is the Double Double, which is double cream and double sugar. If you order the Double Double, you're a true Canadian. It's poutine, you goose f you simple plan loving c bag with arms skinnier than Celine f Dion! I did warn you there were going to be a couple of negative things I had to say about coming here to Banff. Number one thing has to be, it's expensive. Everything's expensive. Food is really expensive. Of course, it's a resort town, and they don't have the great big grocery stores here. They have two small grocery stores. The lift tickets. We found it to be about 50% more than what we were used to paying in Europe. About $20 of your lift ticket every day is probably the transfer to get out there. But we did see a, a few people with a Costco lift ticket. That saves you about $25 a day. The greatest thing that we had was running into a woman who unfortunately had an illness in her party. Have you been tested for Lyme disease? She's from the UK and one day we were going on the shuttle bus and she came out and she said that they had to go back to the UK early and we actually bought lift tickets off of them for half price. Oh, uh, thank you, Larry. Another kind of downside for me was that there was a lack of vegan choices. Canadians are huge meat eaters. Everything had bacon or cheese or something like that on steak. If you want food like that, this is the place to come. Another thing is that this is a tourist town, which means you're gonna to have tourists. Been to the top of the tower. Guidebook says it's a must see. Well, you lot ain't going up there. We found the weekends were amazingly more busy than the weekdays. Gosh, if you can avoid skiing on Saturday, the queues are enormous. Even on Sunday, queues were unbelievable. We just couldn't even get in a restaurant for a cup of coffee. So when it's touristy here, it's really touristy here. Apparently in the summer, there are four million people that come through this little town. Banff is also nestled in, within the Rocky Mountains. It means it is a bit isolated. You need to detach. I can't see you anymore. We went to Panorama. That's a two and a half hour drive. Calgary is two and a half hours. Sometimes people may find that that's a little bit daunting if you wanted to get out of Banff and try going somewhere else. You know what Canadians want? We just want to wake up in the morning and stand there. Let the world move around us. And then when nobody's looking, sneak away. Thank you for watching my top things that I loved about Banff and some of the things that we're a little bit not so in love with about Banff. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very soon. Bye now. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.